going on guys? Noah here with Northern Scavenger. Rachel and I are out on the eastern shore of Nova Scotia doing a two day sea kayak and coastal foraging trip. We're gonna be jumping in the water and seeing what marine creatures we can get for dinner. But we're gonna be targeting the invasive European green crab. The green crab is one of the most invasive species in the world. It came over to the Atlantic coast of North America back in the early 19th century. Not much of a market for them. They're really small and there's not a lot of meat, but we're gonna see what we can do tonight. And there's another marine creature that I wanna to try to catch that I've never tried before, but I think it would be a good appetizer. Stay tuned, I think this is gonna be a really good one. Let's get to it. We're working the shoreline, looking for a leeward spot to set up, and we came across this bay that has this beautiful protected lagoon. This is exactly what we're looking for, a secluded cove on a remote island with clear water and good structure for crabs. I'm gonna jump in to see what I can see. It was really clear paddling in, and it stays relatively shallow, which usually has the most diversity in life to see. This is my first time in the water this year. I love getting out, it's so much fun. It's like, it makes me feel like a kid again. Snorkeling the local lake. This is a much bigger than a lake. And there's sharks. It's been a while since I've been in the water. But every time I come back, I'm reminded on why I love snorkeling so much. It's an immersion into a world of kaleidoscopic life where every moment is a discovery. Like seeing these pollock feeding through the shallows. Or the strange relationship between the surge of the tides and the incredible diversity of the plant species. I could float around all day and watch the ocean, but I have to find some green crabs and I also have to figure out how I'm gonna get them all back to camp. That was a lot colder than I was expecting. When I first jumped in, I was, it took my breath away pretty much. I swam around in the bay here, and I'm noticing a lot of the bigger green crabs are in more of the moving water on the, uh, the rocks over there. There's those more native crabs here as well, which is nice to see, but still a healthy population of the green crabs. I'm gonna go back over to the far end and see if I can catch some of the bigger ones. I think those small ones would really not have enough meat to do anything special with, but those big ones might. Now I have to figure out how I'm gonna get them all into camp, because I didn't bring any sort of bag. But I think I found something on the beach that might help. When I got here, I found a bin in the corner of the site. And I think I might be able to float it and bring it over to the crab spots. The hunting strategy is this old lobster tub and this butterfly net I bought from the dollar store. The plan is to swim around, locate the crabs, scoop, and dump. There's one. I quickly learned I can't let go of the tub or it's going to get blown out to sea. So now I have to make sure I don't let go. I dropped the GoPro several times trying to figure out how I was going to hold everything. But eventually I figured out a system and the crabs were lining up to get caught.
We got 14 or 15 crabs. I got one Atlantic rock crab to compare. That oh. is. And now I'm gonna get the other thing that I've seen out there. This one's a lot easier to catch though. That's right, I'm snail hunting. These are periwinkles, and they are literally everywhere in the tidal zone. I didn't have to go far to get more than I needed. So we got 14 green crabs and a handful, a couple handfuls of periwinkles. I think it's just about that time to start getting dinner ready. We got the main course and as an appetizer, we're gonna have some periwinkles. Neither of us has ever tried this before. If this is good tasting, this is gonna be a big game changer for us because there are so many of these on all the shorelines. You don't even have to be in the water to get them. During low tide, a lot of the rocks have these things all over the place. So. Easy meal. I'm going with a very simple recipe. Garlic, ginger, spice, and green onions, sauteed and then steamed in white wine. Rachel, these are gonna be pretty good. I think so. I'm gonna say these guys are pretty much cooked. Okay. So that's them. So I learned the special tool you need when you're making, when you're eating these escargot style periwinkles is a needle. The uh, periwinkle has a, a flap on the end that's hard and you pop it off. You pop off the flap with your, uh, with your needle and then you try to go in there and look for some of the flesh and you stab it with your needle and you pull it out. <laughs> Cheers. It sort of tastes like a muscle. It sort of tastes like a muscle. <laughs> kind of growing on me. Is it worth wasting half a bottle of wine? No. So my final consensus is it kind of tastes like a muscle. The flavoring is really good, which helps. But what makes it strange is what it looks like when you pull it out of the shell. Water's boiling. So I didn't really know many green crab recipes. So just for fun, I used chat GPT. It came up with a green crab linguine and I have the ingredients right here and the recipe and we're just gonna follow it to the exact to see if it really is a good recipe or not. Linguine with green crab is a delicious seafood pasta recipe. Green crabs are an invasive species that can be found in many coastal areas and they have a delicate and sweet flavor that works wonderfully in this dish. One pound green crab meat. They're definitely gonna have meat on the, 
on the claws, but there should be some meat in there that we might, we might be able to get out, as well as some of the larger legs. Gills. There's like no meat in the uh, body and there's just such a small amount on the claws. So after all that work, we got such a small amount of green crab. Definitely not a pound. It's gonna be a light green crab linguine. You can't get any meat from the body or the legs. The only meat that's worth getting is in the claws and the claws are so small that you need like 100 crabs just to make a meal. But this is what we're gonna use tonight. Green crab linguine. Eight ounces linguine, three tablespoons of olive oil, four garlic cloves minced, quarter teaspoon red pepper flakes, half a cup of dry white wine, one cup cherry tomatoes, half, quarter cup chopped fresh parsley, and the zest of one lemon. Adding the crab meat, white wine, to finish it off with a little salt and pepper and Parmesan cheese. Mm. It's delicious. There's so much flavor in here. action-packed day. Lots of coastal foraging with the green crabs and the periwinkles. Overall, the periwinkles reminded us too much of a booger and the green crabs, there just wasn't enough meat to make it worth it. But regardless, excellent day. Another awesome day out in the ocean. Sea kayaking was great, swell was good, but what was even better was the snorkeling and the coastal forage we did. Overall, it was fun to try it out to see what we could do. Next time, we'll be looking for other stuff though. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys love the content, please consider subscribing. It means a lot to me. It helps a lot with the channel. So thanks so much and until next time.